This offseason, the Giants went out and spent big money to get what they've severely lacked ever since trading Odell Beckham Jr. away two years ago, a legit number one wide receiver. New York pride fifth-year player Kenny Galladay away from the Lions with a four-year $72 million contract with $40 million guaranteed. Some believe that the Giants overpaid, and while the price they paid for Galladay may have been steeper than that of other receivers on the market, it's still not an egregious overpay, because Galladay's $18 million average per year puts him just outside the top five wide receivers in the league, and his $40 million guaranteed sits at 11th at the position. The Giants desperately needed one of the league's top flight receivers. Galladay's play when healthy over the past three years puts him firmly among that tier of receivers, and he's only getting better. Additionally, with Galladay in the fold, the Giants should finally be able to tell what they have in Daniel Jones once and for all. But what exactly does Galladay bring to the Giants? If you know anything about Galladay, it's most definitely that he's an elite contested catch receiver. Just throw it up and Galladay will bring it down more often than not with his huge 6'4", 215 pound frame. In fact, more often than not in this case means 67% of the time, which is the contested catch rate Galladay put up the past two seasons, good for fourth best in the NFL per PFF. In Galladay's special 2019 season, he had the second most catches against tight coverage, behind only Devontae Parker with 19. However, he tied Parker for the best PFF grade on contested targets that season. Galladay is second to only Michael Thomas since becoming a starter in 2018, and contested catch success rate sitting just a point behind Thomas. He also has a near-perfect 96.8 PFF grade on contested targets since entering the NFL in 2017, which is almost two full points higher than Allen Robinson's second place mark. Any way you slice it, you'll see that Kenny Galladay is just one of the best receivers at the catch point the league has seen in recent memory. There's a reason he's drawn comparisons to his predecessor in Detroit, Calvin Johnson. He's an absolute freak, and even if all else fails, the Giants will have one of the funnest highlight machines in the league. But calling Galladay just a contested catch receiver is selling him short. You can't be considered a number one receiver if all you do is make contested catches. Thanks to Galladay's excellence at the catch point, what hardly gets mentioned is that he's one of the league's best deep threats as well. His 18.3 yards per reception mark in 2019 was the third highest in the league, and he has the second highest mark overall over the past three years combined, among receivers with at least 200 targets. A whopping 628 of Galladay's 1,190 yards in 2019 came off targets 20 or more yards down the field. His 16 receptions on such targets was tied for the most in the league that year. Combine both of Galladay's best skills and you'll see that he leads the league with 17 contested catches on targets 20 or more yards down the field since 2017. But again, I still see people selling Galladay short by labeling him just a contested catch receiver who can't get open. All that tells me is that they haven't actually watched him play and have just built an image of him in their minds from early in his career. Many people assume that all receivers who are great at 50-50 balls are only so often in those situations because they can't create separation, a la Calvin Benjamin or Alshon Jeffrey, but that couldn't be further from the truth with Galladay. It's true that in Galladay's rookie season, and somewhat in his sophomore season, that he was largely just a deep threat who could high point the ball at the best of them, but he really took his game to a new level in 2019. Per Matt Harmon's Reception Perception Project, Galladay had success rates at getting open versus man coverage of just 63.2% and 66.0% in his first two seasons, which ranked in the 33rd and 42nd percentiles respectively. However, that mark jumped all the way up to 73.4% in 2019, putting him in the 82nd percentile of all receivers that season. For those not used to working with percentiles, this means that Galladay graded out better than 82% of all receivers. Even in Galladay's injury shortened 2020 season, he put up a similar success rate and ranked in the 74th percentile, showing that there was some level of sustainability to that 2019 success. Galladay saw similar improvements across the board in terms of success rates versus press coverage. Though his mark did fall in 2020, I'd more readily cough up struggles versus press to a nagging hip injury than if he had struggled versus basic man. 
All of this is to say that while Galladay remains one of the most dangerous deep threats in the league, he has also transformed into a very good route runner to where he can get open on more difficult shorter routes as well. Per next gen stats, Galladay is second to only DeAndre Hopkins in yards per crossing route since 2018 with 4.3. No Giants receiver exceeded two yards per crosser last year. Matthew Stafford looked to him whenever he needed a play in 2019, as evidenced by Galladay's 21 catches on third down that year, which was the sixth most in the league. Now, Daniel Jones will have a similar security blanket. Galladay and Jones should already theoretically be a match made in heaven based on both of their existing skill sets. Contrary to popular belief, Jones took a big step forward in 2020 from his rookie season, increasing his PFF grade nearly 13 whole points. This was mostly due to Jones' willingness to take shots. His tight window throw rate of 22% tied for the fourth highest mark in the league, and it was even higher than that of Galladay's former gunslinger. Additionally, Jones had the third highest PFF grade on throws 20 or more yards down the field with a staggering 95.6 mark. This, all while dealing with the lowest graded pass blocking offensive line in football and the 8th worst receiving unit per PFF. Darius Slayton and Sterling Shepard are solid weapons, but adding Galladay as the number one pushes them all down a peg on the depth chart to the rightful spots where they might further succeed. The Giants have now successfully built a solid all around group of weapons for Daniel Jones like the Broncos have done with Drew Locke. And, in both scenarios, it's now up to the quarterback to show that he can fully take advantage of it. If Kenny Galladay successfully recovers from his injury to get back to the player he was in 2019, then he'll be ready to join the small elite class of true number one receivers in the NFL. He had already showcased the upward trajectory he was on before his untimely injury, as evidenced by his yards per route run mark improving over each of the past four seasons. He was already a top 10 receiver in 2019 based off of Football Outsiders Total Value Metric DYAR, in addition to being 7th in receiving yards and 1st in touchdown receptions. Galladay has perhaps the strongest hands in the league, and he can outfight any DB at the catch point. And that's assuming the DB is able to even hang with Galladay to get to the catch point, as Galladay has transformed himself into an all-around receiver thanks to vastly improving his route running chops over the past two years. Whether you agree with the money New York handed Galladay or not, you cannot deny that he immensely improves the team on the field. Worst case scenario, Galladay gets injured again and the Giants are unable to see what Daniel Jones looks like with a legit number one. Best case scenario, just see what adding a legit number one receiver did for another quarterback who struggled in his first two seasons in Buffalo. By no means am I predicting that New York will see similar results to what Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs had in 2020 because Allen's third year leap was unprecedented and Diggs is maybe the best receiver in the sport. But it's not outside the realm of possibility that Jones takes another step forward thanks to his new weapon, because Kenny Galladay is truly a superstar number one receiver entering his prime just waiting to be unleashed.